a pass. Looking deep downfield, wide open is Chapman. He comes back to get him at midfield and catches it into Oklahoma State territory. Conklin and Chapman on the left-hand side. Cooper wants to throw it. Moving to his right. He's going to run the football. 15, 10, 5. Puts his head down. Touchdown, Cooper Rush from 16 yards. And the Chippewas take the lead. The 2015 football season kicked off last Thursday. The Chippewas fell at home to Oklahoma State 24 to 13. We'll break down the game next for you right here on Chippewa Rewind. Welcome into our very first show of Chippewa Rewind, presented by the Morning Sun. I'm your host, Adam Jackson, and joining me is CMU head football coach, John Bonamigo. Each week, we'll look back at the Chippewa's previous game, break down some of the pivotal plays, and get coach's thoughts on how his team performed. We'll also preview Central Michigan's upcoming opponent. You can watch the show every week on CMUChippewas.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, CMish Athletics, or catch us on Twitter, at CSN Digital. As noted in the open, the Chippewas fell 24-13 at Kelly Short Stadium. Coach, before we recap the game, it was your first time on the sideline as the Chippewa head coach. How did Thursday night go for you? Uh, obviously a very emotional time for me. It's a place that I've always wanted to be, a role that I've always wanted to have. And, uh, you know, I think like any player in the first game, I had my pregame jitters, but once the game started going, I got into the flow of things and really didn't think about it too much because there's a job to do. I know you wanted a, a big crowd. You were talking about having a loud student section. What do you think of the atmosphere? Well, first of all, I want to thank our student section. I thought they were outstanding. They were loud. They were proud. They, were, they got there early and they stayed late. And uh, you know, it's what I remember uh, of Kelly Short Stadium back from when I, when I was here. I think uh, the weather scared some of the crowd away, but uh, overall, I was pleased with the attendance and. But gosh, our students, I can't say enough great things about them. They were outstanding. And again, my hat's off to them. I appreciate it. And uh, we look to see, forward to seeing you that they're in full force this Saturday. All right, well, let's jump right into the game. It starts, you win the toss, elect to defer, and kick it off to Oklahoma State. Your defense comes up with a big stop so you can get the football back. Yeah, you can see here, this is um, Malik Fountain and... Uh, Ricketts on a stop there, good form tackling. We had a lot of bodies around the football there, and that's what we're, one of the things we emphasize is, is running to the ball and swarming to the football. They get a pass to Aitman, but again, another good tackle by Stefan Armstead. Yeah, good break on the ball here by Stefan, good form tackle. Uh, you know, gets a receiver down there for a minimal gain, and again, good defensive stop. One of the big things as a football team, you got to get off the field on third down. You guys do with another great tackle by Waller on the sideline. Well, this was a point of emphasis going into the game. These, these, they did a good job last year of taking care of the football. Oklahoma State did. They didn't turn the ball over a lot. Teams that beat them were able to move the chains on third down on offense and get them off the field on third down. So that was critical for us to get them, get them off the field there. Now they do pin you deep, and Cooper Rush, his first throw of the season, he ends up turning it over with an interception. Yeah, he gets baited here. We had a little bit of curl flat concept, and uh, you know he was trying to go to Mark there on the curl, and uh, safety fell back inside and picked it off. It's a great play by that kid, you know. But Cooper's uh, got ice water in his veins, and uh, I think he came back out and completed the next six in a row on the next drive, uh, which is what we expect from him. Anthony Rice makes the tackle there, but then your defense holds them to a field goal, which I thought was big early. I thought that was a critical, you know, for us to be in a sudden change position like this. Here's Kayvon on a great, great tackle. Again, balls out there. Uh, we almost get that one back. There was a couple of opportunities we had uh, where the ball was on the ground and we just didn't get a chance to capitalize on those. But, but for us to, to come up with a stop in that situation and hold them to a field goal was, was huge from our defense. So they do get the field goal, and then as you said, Cooper comes back out, settles in, goes six for six on the next drive, and starts it with a big third down run to pick up 22 yards. Yeah, this always makes me nervous when I see him doing this. You know, I want it, got to work on him sliding a little bit. I was worried about uh, that guy coming up behind him, but you know, 
Cooper's a guy I don't want him taking a lot of hits, but that was a critical play in the game. He uh, improvised there, used his legs, and got the, got the first down. Big play. And how about that drive? Three third down conversions. The next two he finds Corey Willis for 14 and then is able to find Eric Cooper as well. Yeah, nice job here by Corey with the catch, turning up, get the extra yardage there. Uh, you know, Corey's another young guy that's really emerging in that receiving core. Very talented receiving core for us. And we fast forward, you guys stop each other. It's three to three into the second quarter and they've got it deep in your own territory. Kayvon makes a, a touchdown saving tackle at the one yard line. Uh, again, good job here by Kayvon. Good wrap tackle. And the ball's down at the one. And then on a third down, it looks like Palmer makes the stop, but then there was a penalty on the play. What happened down there? We had too many people on the field, and we had a sub run out of the back of the end zone. You can't do that, and so, uh, you know, the result is a penalty. Then they bring in their backup quarterback. It's uh, J.W. Walsh. He's able to get in on the scramble and get six. Mm -hmm. He gets the corner there. We don't quite get force contained there, uh, but, uh, you know, when you're down there on the one yard line, man, you just don't like to put yourself in those type of situations. So they take a 10-3. You're punting the ball here. Ron Caluzzi, as a former special teams coach, this had to be great to see. He gets a big punt into it. And again, it's that senior Kayvon Frazier with great coverage. Uh, yeah, great punt by Ron. You know, good hang time, good placement on the punt. And then you see there Kayvon playing through a block and making a nice blow up tackle there. That really got the sideline and the crowd going. Uh, it's what we expect from our special team. And then you get a stop, and then you go into your bag of tricks, and it's a double pass from Kroll to Chapman for 40 yards. Well, we're always going to be wide open, and uh, we're always going to have tricks. And, you know, as we always say, we don't want to go down with them in our back pocket here. I think uh, Jesse double pumps here a little bit, gets the ball out a little late to Mark. Uh, never going to complain about a 40-yard gain, but if uh, he could have led him down the field a little bit, I think that one could have been a touchdown. It was that wide open. And for Jesse Kroll, why did you choose him to make that throw? Had he shown you something in practice? Yeah, he has. We've got a couple guys that we can do that with, uh, he, him being one of them. Um, if you remember back to the spring game, I think we ran the same play. So again, unfortunately, that drive stalls, but then we push forward to the end of the second quarter, and you move right down the field, starting with a nice pass to Anthony Rice to start this drive. Another great target here for Cooper. Uh, well-placed ball right on the sideline. Only place a person that can make that play is Anthony. He gets one foot, he actually gets two feet in down, bound, so that would have been good in, on Sunday too in the NFL, and uh, big play. Then you go to the near sideline, you hit Mark Chapman <clears throat> for 20, and then of course you find your senior Ben McCord and you're right down there to the goal line. Yeah, this is a nice, another nice catch by uh, Mark. Good uh, back shoulder throw by, by Cooper. Again, well-placed well ball, good catch. Uh, move the chains. And then again, we see Anthony Rice makes the catch. Again, a lot of success through the air on this final yeah, drive. You, know, you, noticed, uh, you noticed Cooper stepping up in the pocket there and delivering a strike, perfectly timed pass. Again, uh, Anthony had a great game. Uh, really proud of him. Again, uh, what you're seeing is Cooper's ability to move the ball around and really uh, target a lot of different people. So we go into the half. It's 10 to 6, Oklahoma State in front. You're probably thinking you could be ahead, it could be better, but you're still in this game and you get the ball to receive the second half. What were your thoughts after the first 30 minutes? Well, my thoughts after the first half was that we should be up 14-10. And that's what I shared with the team. You know, I was met by a very confident team, a uh, very energized team, a uh, very eager team. And then that's what we expect. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, really proud of how, how we came out in the first half and even how we finished the game, how we started the second half. All right, we'll stay right with us. We'll come back and break down that second half when we come back. Because we are modest, they think we can't be unforgiving. Because we're known for our manners, they think we can't reign supreme. Because we're not fueled by the spotlight, they think we won't steal it. 
because we work out on a frozen tundra, they think we won't bring the heat. You know what we say? Nothing at all. Here, on our turf, on our field, we keep our heads down and our eyes up. And no matter what we face, we answer with sweat. Because Max speaks louder than words. Welcome back to Chippewa Rewind. As we said, it's 10 to 6. Cowboys are in front. Coach, what are you telling the team coming out for that third quarter at halftime? Well, that we should be up 14 10. And, uh, you know, it's an energized group. They're a spirited group. They're a confident group. And, you know, they're chomping at the bit to play the second half. It seemed like they came out energized because you guys go on a drive and get your first touchdown of the season. Devin Spaulding. Cooper Rush is able to find him for nine yards here. Yeah, uh, nice job here by, by Spaldo, you know, turning it up, getting extra yardage, and uh, shoestring tackle there by uh, their guy. Otherwise, could have probably gone for a little bit more. Second and one, great time to use anything you want here. You elect to go with a bubble screen to Chapman, pick up the first down, and then Cooper gets into the end zone with his feet. Yep, uh, good job there by Cooper, quick delivery, and then Chap getting the first down. And then uh, here Cooper pulls it down. And, uh, you know, I think he said it best. When you're at the goal line, you got to get find a way to get it in. He does a good job there running over a defender and getting his first touchdown of the year. They come back, and Rudolph puts together a drive and is able to find Glidden a couple of times. And then Rudolph able to do the same thing as Cooper, find some space, and he runs into the end zone. Yeah, we, uh, we lost containment there inside the pocket, let him out, and... Uh, you know, didn't break or converge on the ball quick enough there. Uh, can't give up plays like that. Next play, though, a great bounce back by your defense. Again, Josh Cox seems to be everywhere. He comes up with a big play on the jet sweep. Really pleased the way with jo Josh played in his first game here. And, uh, you know, future's bright for this young man. Uh, he's a smart, tough player and uh, good open field tackler, as we see there. Then we push forward to the fourth quarter. This is their touchdown drive and it starts with Rudolph to Glidden for a sliding catch. Yeah, again, well-placed ball by him, by their quarterback. You know, tough to defend that one down low there. Uh, you know, you got a break on the ball. On the next play, Rudolph fumbles the football, an opportunity for your defense to potentially get the football I actually, back. I actually thought we had this ball here. I thought Joey had it. Uh, their uh, offensive lineman there, you know, that's just the way the ball bounces sometimes. That could have been a big play in the game. Uh, just a fraction too late there. We had bodies there. We had more bodies than they did. It's just the way the ball bounces sometimes. And then we go to the touchdown pass. Aitman's able to just jump over the top, use his athleticism, and he was able to pull it down. Yeah, this was on Stefan here. I thought, uh, I, don't know, I thought there might have been a little bit of a push off there, but I uh, guess there wasn't because they didn't call it. So that's the final 24 to 13. The Chippewas fall in their opener. Coach, not a win, but your thoughts on your team's performance? Again, I think we need to play a cleaner game overall against a quality opponent. When you uh, turn the ball over, even though we only had the one, it still led to three points. We had penalties at critical times in the red zone and then other times during the stretch of the ball game. Uh, you know, got to clean those things up. Again, I'm really proud of the effort. Um, kids played really, really hard, you know, but that's that's one of our standards. Uh, that's something we expect from one another uh, week in and week out. Uh, you know, disappointed that we didn't come away with the win. Thought that that was a very winnable game, but at the same time happy with the effort that we showed. Chippewas will have to put this one behind them as we fast forward to next week. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Chippewas' next opponent as Monmouth comes in in week two. know that drinking chocolate milk is great for strong healthy bones but did you know that chocolate milk is great for your muscles too that's right low-fat chocolate milk is a natural source of high quality protein that helps build lean muscle so when you're hitting the gym 
Remember your chocolate milk to add that lean body mass. But that's not all. Studies have found that chocolate milk has a great carb to protein ratio to help replenish energy stores in exhausted muscles. Just look at how other drinks compare. Replacing muscle fuel after exercise is essential to an athlete's recovery. A recent study from Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise found that drinking 16 ounces of fat-free chocolate milk with its mix of carbohydrate and protein led to greater concentration of glycogen and muscles at 30 and 60 minutes post-exercise, allowing the athlete to recover and be ready for that next training session or game. So, you might want to ditch the generic sports drink the next time you exercise and grab some chocolate milk instead. It's nature's sports drink and it has what you need to perform and recover as an athlete. For more information, visit the United Dairy Industry Michigan website or milkmeansmore.org. All right, welcome back. The Chippewas' next opponent is the Monmouth Hawks as they come into Kelly Shorts on Saturday. And they're led by a real veteran coach. 23 years he's been at Monmouth. Kevin Callahan, he's won five conference titles there. Going to be another tough opponent. I have a ton of respect for Coach Callahan. Uh, been there since the inception of the program. He's done a great job of bringing them, you know, shepherding that program. Uh, just a ton of respect for them. Uh, FCS opponent coming in, first uh, FBS t uh, game, and uh, I'm sure they'll be fired up for this. We'll be, we'll be prepared and we'll be ready. They've got a couple athletic guys on the offensive side of the ball. Cody Williams, he's a sophomore quarterback, started his first game for them this weekend. He's a scrambler as well. How do you get prepared for that? Well, I got a chance to watch him uh, yesterday against Holy Cross. I thought he came out, uh, it looked like he was a little little rusty at the, in the beginning of the game or maybe first game nerves, whatever. But I thought that he really settled in late, down, late in that game, made some nice plays, made some good, uh, good throws, made some uh, nice runs with his legs. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to do a great job on defense uh, against their offense for sure. And then they've got a star running back, LeVon Chaney. He led the league last year in all-purpose yards. Little scat back, about 180 pounds. He's going to be tough to handle as well. Well, he's a guy that, that you know, and watching them is to me was I was most impressed with. Uh, he's a dynamic little playmaker, and uh, he makes plays out of the backfield, uh, catching the ball as well as when they hand it off to him. Uh, tough competitor, uh, really good running back, and uh, you know we'll we will have our hands full containing him. The game is on Saturday at three o'clock at Kelly Short Stadium. Coach, from week one to week two, what do you want to improve on the most coming into that game on Saturday? Well, I think we need to improve in all areas, and I think great teams do that. I think the, uh, the emphasis is always on us. Uh, you know, uh, Monmouth happens to be an FCS opponent. Uh, it really doesn't matter to us. They're, they're, they wear different colors. They have different logos than we do. Uh, it's a faceless opponent. Our preparation is always going to be uh, – the emphasis will always be on us improving individually and as a football team. And, you know, we have to, I want to see us take better care of the football. I want to see us uh, convert on third down at a greater uh, frequency. And I want to see us establish and, and be able to run the football. All right, Coach, well, thanks for joining us, and we wish you the best of luck this week against Monmouth. Thanks very much, Adam. It's great to be here. I want to thank our fans again for showing up against Oklahoma State, and I look forward to seeing all of you this Saturday at Kelly Shorts as we take on the Monmouth. All right, that'll do it for our first show of Chippewa Rewind. Thanks so much for stopping in, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Join us again next time as Central Michigan looks for their first win of the season against Monmouth on Saturday afternoon. For CMU head football coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jaxa. We'll see you again next week.